Hey everybody, how you doing? Dave Fenor here, and man, what a day, what a day, what a day. Um, you know, sometimes you, you just uh, don't seem to have time to fit it all in. This was one of those days. Somehow I managed to fit it all in. I just got off of a, a session moments ago. Uh, can't tell you exactly what it was. It was a video game. Um, I was playing a wonderful character. It's coming out uh, later this year. Uh, it will be announced at E3, and it was just exciting, exciting uh, to play this character. So uh, looking forward to it. There's going to be some uh, trailers and promos that they say I will be featured heavily in, and yay, you know. Uh, one thing about this work, I don't know about you, but for me, I remember how excited I was the first time I had a gig, and I'm just as excited every time I have a gig now. So, excuse me for my exuberance, but uh, feeling pretty good about that session. Uh, no guests tonight, just you and I, and if you have some questions, uh, please uh, uh, jot them down. You know, it's funny about being in this business for a long time. Uh, I understand the old saying, and I guess I got enough gray hair to understand the old saying too, I've forgotten more than you'll ever know. Uh, it's usually used as an insult, but what I discover it to be is at a, a certain point in a career, as a certain point of doing things, things that you take for granted, uh, things that, that I don't think about, things that, that, that people who have been doing something for a long time don't think about because they become second nature are questions that somebody who is, you know, just beginning that journey or not nearly as far on the trail uh, of that journey as you are, are really interested in. And so often those are the kinds of questions that you may feel are simple questions, um, it, it, things that wouldn't occur to me to share with you. But when you have those questions, don't feel like, oh, man, I can't ask that. That's, that's kind of elementary. Ask. Ask. Uh, because uh, sometimes it doesn't occur to me that, oh, somebody needs to know that. Uh, just how the world works. A couple things also that I want to bring up. Uh, the Voice Arts Awards are coming up, and uh, they are taking entries now. Let's make that big. Whoa, not that big. Uh, they are taking entries now. Oh, come on. I guess I can't do it quite like that. Uh, let's do it that way. Yeah. Um, Voice Arts Awards open for entries, and uh, that's the super early bird special. Uh, and they are adding some things, new languages, new categories. Audio description is becoming a thing. Uh, Arabic voice, Spanish voice, Portuguese voice, uh, podcasts. So uh, for those of you who uh, are interested in entering uh, in the Voice Arts Awards or getting your tickets now, and uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be uh, virtual or actual, uh, we seem to be coming out of this pandemic now. How far uh, out of it we come? Uh, will it ever be the same again? Not sure, but uh, life is going on. And I notice, um, like the gig I, the gig I just had today, uh, this was a gig that ordinarily would have been done at a studio outside of my house. Uh, or this is a, a, a huge game, a huge property, uh, and you just were not able to record things from your own home until this pandemic. So it's kind of a big deal now, and it's going to open up some opportunities in the future uh, for anybody from anywhere who has the talent and the right studio capability to be able to connect uh, cleanly and record cleanly. Uh, their files. Um, this was a session that, well, they could have used Source Connect or Connection Open, but they did not. Uh, they had me record, which I did on Twisted Wave. Uh, they had me record. They ran a backup uh, from the Zoom session, uh, more for uh, 
if they want to do, do some playback or something like that. But um, I recorded everything from my studio and send them the files. Uh, this means that if this AAA game is willing to do that, there are going to be a lot more opportunities from people anywhere with a decent studio uh, to have work. Just a word to the wise. Uh, make sure your studio is right. Uh, as you're making more money, uh, don't necessarily invest it in uh, clothes and houses and whatnot, first of all. Uh, invest it in upgrading your equipment. Uh, by the same token, don't buy the most expensive stuff available uh, before you're ready or can afford it. Uh, I'm reminded of a guy I met uh, a few years ago. He had just retired and spent, oh, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 on studio equipment, uh, and he was just getting started. He bought all the best stuff. Uh, and I remember thinking, well, what if this doesn't work? Um, that's kind of foolhardy. Uh, build your career slowly. Invest in your career slowly. Now, if you've got, uh, you know, a billionaire and you can get that $500 million yacht, uh, like Jeff Bezos, well, who cares? But, uh, be smart about this a career. It's a business, uh, and you want to invest in your business, but you don't want to invest too much when you're not quite sure you have a business yet. Uh, a couple things here. Um, these Ask Dave Fenoy's end up on YouTube, my YouTube channel, Dave Fenoy VoiceOver Training. And if you are interested in uh, taking voiceover classes with me, uh, private lessons, or to keep track of where I might be teaching, DaveFenoy.com, visit and uh, you can sign yourself up and go from there. Let's uh, say hello to some people here. Janessa A. Morgan, good e Morgan, good evening. Uh, Sarah Tindall, how are you doing? Uh, uh, Hamadi, what's going on? Michael Sessoms, and uh, Michael, when I see you, I'm so glad that you're you know, still here and uh, doing well. Uh, Jimmy Bancole, uh, how you doing? And, uh, Theo, what's going on? Theo, you know, you, when you called me, I was right in the middle of a session. I, I couldn't talk to you then. Uh, let's see. Jimmy bancoli has got something to say here. Let me, uh, pull it up. There's a Nigerian equivalent to that adage, Dave. No matter how many clothes a youngster has, he can't have as many rags as an elder. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I, I kind of get it. I do. I really do. Uh, Michael Sessoms, uh, what are some of the COVID precautions and procedure? Oh, let, you know, just pull it up on the screen, Fanoi, Jesus. What are some of the COVID precautions and procedures you are experiencing when you go to a studio? You know, it's a very good question. Um, now, I've since uh, in the last month or so, I've been to more sessions out than I did in the whole year when COVID was really, really a thing. Uh, I think I had five or six sessions in that, that whole year, and I've had six or seven uh, since then. Uh, one of which, uh, Pro Studio, Pro Studio that's been around forever. When I got to town in 1990, this studio was a legendary studio. Went in the other day uh, to do a job, and the, the mic that was hanging was a Rode NT1. So for all you Rode NT1 owners... Hey, <laughs> you're, you're making it to the big leagues here. Uh, but generally, uh, when I have gone out to a studio over the last year or even now, uh, precautions are great. Uh, it's already fairly safe uh, doing voiceover in a studio because usually you are in a room by yourself uh, and the engineer is in, a, in another room behind glass. And uh, so often... Uh, the directors, the producers, other people who may be involved in the session are not even at the studio. Uh, you're watching them on a big video. So, uh, going to one studio, and this is pretty normal. Uh, you pull up outside in your car and you text them and let you let them know you are there. Uh, you sit in your car and you wait. Someone comes out uh, and they've got the little, uh, you know, thermometer that they point at your head. 
uh, and they ask you a series of questions. Have you been feeling ill? Have you experienced any of the uh, symptoms? Um, have you been around anybody that experienced the system, symptoms? Have you had and gotten over it? Have you been vaccinated? So forth and so on. Uh, they check your temperature. Uh, and they're in a mask. They expect you to be in a mask. Uh, then, uh, keeping your distance, you are led into the studio. Uh, they will go open the door for you so you don't even touch the handle uh, and let you go in and let you know that uh, uh, please don't take off your mask until you're at the mic. Uh, the mic has been cleaned. Uh, anything that you're going to touch has been cleaned. Often, they are asking you to bring your own headphones and uh, once you begin, uh, you don't come out of the studio unless uh, you are accompanied, that someone opens the door for you so you're not touching anything. Uh, and, you know, you got to go to the bathroom and i uh, got to take a, a break here. Or if it's a long session, you're taking a break uh, in general. Uh, you might be allowed to go to uh, uh, the kitchen and uh, get some coffee or water or a drink or something, uh, but you're not in close proximity. You don't come in and hug and shake hands with anybody. And uh, when you leave, uh, if you're signing any paperwork there, it's on a screen, uh, or better yet, they send it to you. Now, I don't know how long that is going to have to go on. I think it's going to be uh, more along the lines of uh, as the numbers of people who get sick go down and down and down, which they are, thankfully, especially here in California. Uh, we have the lowest uh, uh, incident of uh, COVID rate in the country, I believe, right now. Uh, thank you, uh, Governor Newsom. Uh, and I hope you don't get recalled. Uh, but that is what you can expect. Uh, let's see. And da, 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 da. Michael Haskins, always, always shop around. There are deals out there. Uh, talking about shopping around for equipment. Uh, I had someone ask me today, uh, a student of mine wanted to upgrade and wanted to know, one, if their microphone was good enough. B, uh, what kind of interface they should purchase. Uh, and uh, there was, a, and I, I gave them a couple choices. Uh, and I, I'm going to keep it simple. When people ask me about equipment, there are several mics that I can recommend. Uh, my choice uh, always would be Sennheiser 416 Neumann TLM 103. There are tons of other great microphones out there that cost more money, uh, some that cost less. Uh, but you will never go wrong with those two. There are some microphones you can go wrong with. Uh, this particular student had a pretty decent blue microphone. Blue makes some great microphones once you get up into the decent microphones. Uh, not the Snowball, not the Yeti. Uh, forget those. Uh, but what has become standard these days uh, on the low end of interfaces? Uh, the Focusrite 2i2. Uh, it's a great uh, uh, interface for the money. Great preamp. Uh, what has become more standard uh, when you have uh, a few more dollars to spend, Apollo. Uh, I have uh, the Apollo uh, 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 4, the quad. Uh, and they cost a little bit of money, but they're worth it. Uh, we are seeing a switch from hardware to plugins. Uh, where you might have spent a uh, thousand bucks to twenty five hundred bucks for uh, the right preamp, now you can get that same preamp for a couple hundred dollars as a plug-in. Uh, and this is the direction the world is going in. Does that mean that uh, if you've got all that hardware just to get rid of it, not necessarily? Uh, but as we're looking to uh, use space better. Uh, to stay abreast of things, or when things fall apart, you might want to think about that. All right. Uh, hey, Portia Q, how you doing? Uh, why, Emela Ya, greetings from Bermuda. Oh, well, all the way down there in Bermuda. Well, how are you doing? 
And let's see, Mr. Phil Kaufman, what have you got to say? I haven't seen you in a good while. I'll be able to get uh, optional noise floor and mic levels in my home studio with the AC running using the downward expander in my voice processor. Does downward expansion diminish the voice when recording? You know, Phil, I wish that was a question that I felt like I could answer uh, with some authority. Uh, I would suggest George Whittem, uh, Jordan Reynolds, uh, Tim Tippetts. Uh, those guys are the experts. I can give you some information, but when you uh, get to those extremes, I'm thinking you want to talk to one of those guys. Uh, Jordan Reynolds, Tim Tippetts, George Whittem. Probably a few other people out there that can uh, help you, but those three guys I know can help you answer that question. Um, Michael Glover, love the PC and blanket booths. Uh, Michael Glover sent me a, uh, by the way, uh, right now that's, uh, get those questions going because it's been a long day for me. And if, if nobody's asking questions or whatnot, I'm not going to run my mouth all night. I'll, I'll say thank you, goodbye, and I'll go have dinner and take a nap. Uh, uh, Michael Glover, uh, who's been a student of mine, wonderful voice, just a magnificent voice, uh, shared with me a post he did about his, uh, his journey to find uh, a good place to record. Uh, and he finally wound up with the PVC and uh, blanket booth. Uh, that uh, Vocal Booths to Go, I think, uh, they're the ones who sell those. And I've seen a lot of people have them. When I had uh, Joe Cipriano on, he mentioned that uh, he had gotten in his home um, a studio bricks, which, you know, you're nine, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, depending on the size. Uh, and he loved it, and it was great. Uh, but in his condo in Miami, he put in uh, PVC and blankets, and he said... They sound the same. They sound the same. So $10,000 or more or three or $400 for the same sound. Uh, the PVC uh, pipes and blankets work. I get the right blankets from uh, uh, voice booth to go. Now, along Michael's journey... Uh, he had a number of things. He got a Chaotica eyeball. I actually like the Chaotica eyeball. I wouldn't use it for my regular studio, but when I'm traveling, uh, it works great. It's only uh, letdown for me is you can't use it with a shotgun mic, and sometimes a shotgun mic is a, a good way, a good thing to take when you're on the road because it tends to only want to hear what's in front of it, not everything that's around it. Uh, and I just wish they would come up with a Chaotica eyeball for the shotgun mic. Until then, I'll be using my little Apogee mic uh, inside the Chaotica eyeball. But not for everyday use. Uh, and then he tried a couple other things. And one of them was a booth. I don't have a picture of it. But you can imagine a booth that starts here, ends here. And you're sticking your head in it. It's on a stand. And then you can pull something behind you. And I remember when he told me about it, and I said, well, you know what? You're going to want to move. I, I, I don't see you enjoying that. And, of course, he uh, had to get rid of it. I, I hope none of you bought it from him, uh, Michael. Uh, so make sure your sound room is right and that uh, that 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 vocal booth to go the pvc with the blankets works uh let's see hello from the pacific northwest well hello to you up there in the pacific northwest um uh christina cal okay they work unless you have helicopters <laughs> Oh, uh, that's true. There's, You know, uh, a lot of people think when you get a booth that it's going to be soundproof. Uh, it is not. Uh, I have yet to be in a booth that is soundproof. They do cut down a lot on the sound, 50% typically uh, with a single wall, a little bit more with a double wall. Uh, but the idea of the booth is not just to uh, keep it quiet. You can be in a, a big room if it's quiet. Um, 
you you want a, a room that's treated. It's easier to treat a booth, less room, uh, so that you don't have your sound bouncing around in your studio. That's the reason you have a booth. And uh, it's not just to keep the sound from outside, because I promise when a truck goes by, when a huge truck or the dogs are barking or the leaf blowers are blowing, uh, I, I got to pause for a minute or go out and ask somebody to shut up. Uh, oh, Michael Glover, back with the uh, with a thing I told him not to buy that didn't work, the ISOVOX. And what would you pay for that? About 1200 bucks. Ugh. They're out there to get us, guys. They're out there to get us. Don't be a sucker. Oh, Molly Page, how you doing? It's been forever. How are you? And uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Van Rosebro, would you recommend being joining the union? Uh, I do. I am a great believer in the union. We're living in a world just at the moment where unions are not in favor. Uh corporations and the 1% have managed to convince the rest of us working stiffs uh, that somehow if they pay us less, we'll make more, that somehow we have more freedom by not having uh, someone, uh, a group of us together bargaining for what we're going to make, uh, that somehow that uh, they're just going to give us more money uh, out of the goodness of their hearts. But what have we seen? Uh, the working class in the United States uh, has not had a real raise in over 50 years. Meanwhile, the 1% has had a more than a 1,000% raise. Um, what people are making, a minimum wage hasn't really gone up in years. Uh, we're fighting over 15 an hour when it should probably be about 25 an hour as a minimum wage uh, because the price on everything else has gone up, except your labor. And let's not kid ourselves. To a certain extent, we are entrepreneurs. Some of us make a lot more money than some others, but we all need to make a living wage. And collective bargaining, which is what a union does, is good for us. Being able to put money aside for every gig for a pension is good for us. I promise you, when you hit 65, 67, uh, and and you perhaps are ready to retire, having a, a pension of several thousand dollars a month or more uh, is going to be of benefit to you. You're going to want that. Uh, otherwise, it's really just incumbent upon you uh, to save it all for yourself. Now, in a perfect world, we'd all do that. It ain't a perfect world. Things happen to people. Life savings sometimes gets spent for something else. Uh, so, yeah, uh, union's a good thing. I, I have health care uh, because of a union. Uh, now, yes, I have to pay a certain amount, but I promise you I'm paying a lot less per month for my health care than somebody that is not partially covered by the union. So, yeah, as soon as you can, join the union. And support union work, and not just uh, voiceover union work, but union work in general. All right. Uh, oh, uh, and Jimmy, uh, well, this is for you, Michael. Insane in the membrane for that. I, I can hear your laugh now, Michael. I can hear it. Uh, Aria Moody, did you say we should not use a booth or small space because we don't want our sound bouncing around? I missed what you said. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of ways to get over the biggest issue that we have when we're recording, and that is sound bounce. Uh, that thing that makes you sound great when you're singing in the bathroom is all the echo. Well, it doesn't work in voiceover. That makes you sound bad. It doesn't sound natural. Uh, so what you want to be in is a quiet room that has its surfaces treated so there aren't hard surfaces that are bouncing sound back at your microphone to give you that uh, sound bounce. Now, you can do that in a number of ways. I have a booth. I have a booth right there. Uh, and it's got uh, lots of uh, uh, rock wool covered in uh, burlap and some foam in there. And uh, it cuts down on the noise and it cuts down on the sound bounce. And it sounds great. I could be in this room. This room doesn't sound bad, 
uh, but it's a little too accessible to outside where uh, my dogs might be barking or the gardeners might be uh, doing something or uh, where, where noise could be. But if it were more quiet on a regular basis, I could have the room here treated in a normal room uh, with foam or blankets or, or thick curtains uh, or rock wool covered in, in a cloth. And that could work. It's you want it quiet, but even more so, you don't want sound bouncing around. Uh, if you look behind me, I have a shelf with all kinds of stuff, memorabilia, gifts and things from uh, fans and coffee cups from places I've worked and whatnot. Well, that also acts uh, to help treat your room because it's not a flat surface for sound to just hit and come right back at you. Sound hits that and it gets diffused and it goes different directions, but not right back at me. Uh, so different ways to do that. One of my favorite ways, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Rolanda Watts, uh, who does a lot of voiceover work. And if she will return my doggone call, I'm going to have her on Ask Dave for knowing anything. Uh, but Rolanda had a studio. It was just a room. None of the room was treated except for one corner. In that corner, she had uh, curtains, thick curtains. And her microphone, uh, Sennheiser 416, came out of that corner. So she's talking into a corner. So the sound hit those curtains and was, you know, they, they drink up the sound. So nothing was bouncing back. The rest of the room didn't matter. She had something up above her, but the rest of the room didn't matter because the sound didn't get to bounce from there and bounce back here and then bounce around. A lot of ways you can handle it. And of course, uh, a closet with clothes in it uh, is one of the best places you can record. Uh, da -da -da. Theo, and that's uh, that and some blankets. It's tough in a noisy apartment. Uh, that that can be a problem. Who's calling me now? Why do people call me when I'm doing this? Because they don't know. Uh, well, I'm going to hang up on them. Nope, not taking your call. Uh, let's see. Oh, Orlando, truth. <laughs> Thank you, Orlando. It's lovely to be co-signed. Uh, Michael Haskins. Uh, how about universal guaranteed income? Well, you know what? Uh, that's a, a new idea, and we're we're drifting a little bit. I dr already drifted talking about the union. Um, you know, right now, I think it probably sounds crazy to a lot of people. Uh, I remember when I first heard uh, the idea, I went, hmm, universal income, what? Come on. But there are some countries that do that. If you grow up, if you're born in Kuwait, you have universal income. There's some other uh, Middle Eastern countries uh, or countries that are oil rich uh, that share the wealth with everybody. Uh, would we ever do it here? I don't know. Uh, is there a way it could work? Probably. Uh, will we see it in our lifetime? <laughs> well, if you're much younger than me, maybe. Uh, da, 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 da. uh, in re oh, yeah, I knew you meant that in universal income in reference to wages. Uh oh, what'd I say, Michael? Uh, Michael Glover, check out Vocal Booth to Go, uh, for great custom PVC pipes and acoustic blankets. Uh, and one of the things I love best about doing this are people like Michael Glover who will share information like this and also, uh, on his YouTube channel. Uh, share his journey to find uh, the right booth. Okay, and uh, okay, Aria, okay, great, thank you for now. Um, uh, for now, I just use my closet. Well, if the, if the closet works, uh, it's one of the best places uh, to set up a studio. Now, my issue with the closet, my issue even with blankets or what does it look like to a client if your client is on the call? If if uh, your client wants to see you via video while you are recording? Um, one of the things I think we want to have is the most professional looking studio that we can have. Uh, mine's fairly professional in a uh, kind of junky way. Uh, 
but you don't necessarily want your clients to see uh, your clothes hanging. Uh, you might want to figure out some kind of way to hang some other kind of um, draperies or something that you can pull that don't allow the clothes to be seen. Uh, let's see. Whoa. Well, it looks like there aren't any other questions. I'm it was at 6.30. I may get out of here in just a little bit. Uh, a couple more things I'm just going to bring up to you again. Uh, whoops, that wasn't it. It was... Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, it's, it's, it's gone now. Um, but uh, uh, the Voice Arts Awards coming up. That's voiceover coming up. Uh, and uh, if you go uh, to sovis.com, if you Google the Voice Arts Awards, uh, you can enter now. You can be begin your entering now. Uh, there are several new categories. Uh, we have Arabic voice now. We have Portuguese voice. Uh, we have uh, 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 vocal description uh, now. So uh, this is opening up and opening up and opening up the very new categories in voiceover. Wait a minute and uh, let's see. We'll just go down the list here. Van, are there any new VO artists are there any new things VO artists should be focused on now uh, that the world is opening back up? Uh, well, the same things that you focused on uh, when it was closed up was improving yourself uh, as a talent. Uh, and then because uh, even though we're opening up, we're going to see more people using home studios. Uh, when you saw the, the jobs report the other day, uh, I don't know why it is people want to always say, well, this happened because of this one thing. There are a lot of reasons that job report wasn't what people expected. People thought people were just going to run back to work. Ah, I'm a waiter. Now I can go back and be a waiter. Well, um, or I can go back and, and work in this store. A lot of people decided, you know what, while I'm off here, I'll go to school. A lot of people decided to open up some kind of small business. Um, that they could probably run from online. online. Uh, a lot of people decided, you know what, I am making more on unemployment than I am on this job. And that's not a testament to, oh, we shouldn't have unemployment. That's a testament that people who hire aren't paying enough. Um, when you have people that can make more on unemployment than working, that's because the people who are hiring aren't paying enough. There's a reason we have, we have more billionaires now than ever before. Um, somehow, some way, uh, if there's a minimum wage, maybe there should be a maximum wage. Just saying, it's a thought. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let's see, Michael Gulver again. Okay, my journey, enjoy <laughs> when you can. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, the video that he did. Uh, Aria Moody, thanks for that too, because no one has ever, because no one has ever asked for a video. I better get on it now, just in case. Da -da. Yeah, uh, I'll I'll just mention that again. If you uh, missed what we were talking about, uh, we as professional voice actors, when we are in the booth working with a client. Sometimes they want a camera on. Sometimes they want to see you. Uh, and the, the picture they want to see is you as a professional doing the job in a professional uh, setting. And it doesn't speak highly of you if what they're seeing is your wardrobe behind you. Just saying. All right. Eric Pleasant, have you come across clients complaining about uh, the look of a studio. Shouldn't the sound be what's most important? You know, uh, sure, the sound should be what's most important. Uh, but it's the same kind of thing. Well, why can't I come to work in dirty clothes? Shouldn't how well I work uh, be what's important? You know, uh, it's it, in some ways, it's it's kind of a juvenile question. It's the kind of thing you you thought to say in high school. Uh, well, why do I, why can't I wear sandals? Why can't because you're professional in a professional, um, you want a professional look of some kind. Yeah, we're a very casual society. Now, I'm in a t-shirt. I work in a t-shirt a lot. But 
More often than not, if I'm going out to a gig, I put on a, a shirt with a collar. Um, I'll wear my best tennis shoes. Uh, the ladies typically don't have any issue with that. It's us uh, Neanderthal guys uh, that, that tend to have an issue. Uh, no, you want people to get a view of you that is professional. Uh, and I'm sorry, but the clothes behind you aren't. Now, you got a nice blanket there, something that is doesn't say anything other than uh, backdrop, and uh, that's better. That's better. All right, Theo, uh, the blanket and pillow closet sauna <laughs> I've made for a studio certainly w wouldn't be too visually appealing. Uh, true, but... You know, as much as you can uh, while you're getting your program together, uh, stay off of camera if you can, if you can. Uh, but uh, I, I promise you from time to time, they kind of want to see you in your environment, uh, especially um, if, you know, you, you're doing something where they kind of feel like, oh, you're semi-celebrity. Oh, we want to see that person that's voicing our commercials. We want to see that person that's playing this character. We want to see that person that's narrating these things uh, for our, our company. All right. Michael Haskins again concerning unions. When there has been a Democratic president, uh, unions fared well. A co-worker brought this to my attention. We provide security to companies during labor disputes and strikes. Well, you know, far be it from me to uh, talk about uh, politics. Yeah, you've seen my page, right? Um, it's an interesting phenomena. What people are known for, what the parties are known for, are often exactly the opposite of what they are. Um, in the last several Republican administrations, uh, we had horrible issues, deficits went way up, and it was a Clinton and Obama uh, and, and now a Biden who was stepping in and having to fix enormous problems. Uh, when you have a party that says they don't like government, they don't like the idea of regulations because hey, that gets in the way of us robbing the people of all their money. Uh, and then you have a party that believes in government, that believes in what could, what can government do, we the people are the government, by the way, what can government do uh, to make life better for all Americans as opposed to just the wealthy? How can we fix it so they pay less taxes? How can we fix it so they don't have to pay uh, great salaries? How can we fix it so we'll have a welfare state that will cover what what companies aren't paying. So you can have a full-time job at, at uh, Walmart or someplace and yet not make enough to make ends meet for your family and, and be on welfare. Well, that's a problem. If they're, not, if they're paying you for a full-time job, not enough for you to survive, they're not paying you enough. It's not welfare's fault. It's that employer's fault. But I wax political. You know what? I, I think I'm going to call it a little bit early. Uh, we're going to have some guests coming up over um, over the next few weeks, uh, some of whom don't know they're going to be guests yet. This one does. Uh, Cliff Zellman is going to join me. Uh, I'll be talking with Melissa Motes. Um, I've, I've got uh, some calls into uh, some other people. Uh, who do some other things that are going to be very, very interesting beyond uh, just my rambling uh, here. Not that I don't like to ramble. Uh, being a married guy and all, I generally don't get to talk that much. And this way, I, I, I have the floor to myself. Anyway, love everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in on this very busy day for me. Um, and uh, once again, this will live... Perhaps it's not my best podcast here. Oh, but this will live on my YouTube channel, Ask Dave Fennoy Anything. Um, and uh, you can, if you're interested in voiceover lessons, private coaching, uh, or want to be reminded that this is happening every Wednesday, uh, visit DaveFennoy.com. You can sign up. 
Um, looking forward to talking to you. Looking forward to seeing you guys next week. And with that, book something. All the best, everybody. Bye-bye.